Hello, this is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're here today with Lonnie Schilling, who is CEO of BirdStep. Lonnie, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Enjoy it. Um, our theme today is connected cars, and uh, putting the insurance issues and the, the kind of policy issues aside, in your opinion, what do you see as uh, some of the major hurdles for connected car adoption? You know, Jeff, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very good question, and we could probably talk for hours about that. Fact of the matter is, though, I think that um, one of the greatest challenges we see today is, is, is really around connectivity and, and the user experience um, with that connectivity in, in the connected vehicle. Uh, if, you, if you look today and you listen to the industry today um, around the connected car, it's very much about... Um, using Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth and other technologies within the vehicle, using some, uh, some Wi-Fi technologies for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure. But I think a challenge there, though, is that the industry is looking at only cellular as the option for out-of-vehicle communications. And that's, that's, that's quite interesting because the mobile industry today is going through a a pretty much uh, a major shift in the way they bring services their, uh, to their consumers where they're challenged uh, with uh, the lack of spectrum and contention in their mobile, in their cellular networks and they're bringing Wi-Fi in now as a viable um, um, a, a viable technology to to provide further bandwidth and further service levels and models to their consumers yet in the connected car industry, we're not really thinking about that yet. We're talking purely cellular. We're not taking into account that the, that the mobile operators are building Wi-Fi networks. In other words, a HetNet uh, comprised of both cellular and Wi-Fi for those consumers. Now, the next challenge therein, and this is something that we do today, is managing that user experience over a HetNet, over a network comprised of cellular and Wi-Fi to manage that 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 uh, that experience, we do that through what we call intelligent network selection, understanding the networks, understanding the quality of the networks, understanding the business policies and the technologies, and then make a decision on do you use cellular at this point in time or do you use Wi-Fi at point in this time? Because the problem is is that if the user does not have a positive experience, and we've learned this in mobile, if the user in the connected car does not have a positive experience. They won't use it. Okay. Well, clearly, BirdStep has a long history in working with the carriers around Wi-Fi user experience. Can you maybe talk about, uh, technically, um, how the the, the Wi-Fi user connected car experience will look like from a continuance of, of service and experience? Yeah. You know, it, it's really interesting because, you know, again, people think of a car. A car is in continuous motion fact of the matter is a car, just like the studies we've been doing in the mobile industry, the vehicle is very much a nomadic entity. Um, there was a very interesting study last year in the UK that um, come to the result that a car is parked 96% of the time. The US it's parked 92% of the time. And often that time it's spent in a garage, indoors, where cellular connectivity, we know today, indoor cellular connectivity is very poor in quality. Um, and then again, who and why would you want to pay for cellular when you're parked in your garage and you can use your own free Wi-Fi? So these are some of the things that we know and have a great deal of experience in through our work with mobile operators around the world to manage that user experience and to leverage those Wi-Fi networks, whether that not uh, that Wi-Fi network is a premium paid network or whether it's a free network, we provide the technology that allows what we call a zero-touch experience. The network and the software that we provide is smart enough to understand which network to use, and again, it's based on technical merit. What's the quality of that network? Um, as well as business logic. Is that a high ARPU subscriber? Is it a low ARPU subscriber? What are the applications that are using those networks right now? And based on all of that data, we can make an intelligent decision. Do you use cellular or do you use Wi-Fi? And when moving to Wi-Fi, one of the greatest challenges in the past is it's been difficult to use. 
How many times have you been in a situation where you have to manually log into a Wi-Fi network and you don't recall your password, you don't recall the credentials? We do a zero-touch handover. The handover is automatic, it's seamless, and it's absolutely transparent to the subscriber. So you bring all that into play, that level of intelligence, and you simplify it for the customer, making it easier for the customer, making it a more enjoyable, relaxing experience for the customer. Now, in, 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 uh, in addition to that, you bring in what we do around big data analytics. And the analytics help then the service providers, i.e. the OEM themselves perhaps. It could be the network operators. It could be the insurance companies or parts manufacturers to understand what is the experience in that vehicle? What are the diagnostics doing? Um, how is the network being used? What applications, what services, et cetera, et cetera. So that gives those operators, those constituencies, a very intimate view on the customer experience that that consumer is experiencing at that time. We've been doing this for years with our mobile operators. We've got a great deal of experience and knowledge and understanding what's important for the consumer in that type of an environment. Again, going back to technically how this, this continuity of experience will actually work, mm -hmm. um, if I'm walking from my house to my car and I'm on mm -hmm. my phone and then I get in my car, uh, is, is my car considered a, another subscriber and um, is it you know, effectively providing a Wi-Fi network that I then, my cell phone moves on to? That's question mm -hmm. one, number one. And number two is you know, what's powering the, the Wi-Fi or what's the connectivity uh, between the cell antenna and my car such that my car becomes the Wi-Fi MiFi. Right, right. A lot of there's a lot of questions and there's more than just two quite frankly. Yeah. But um, you know let's let's start with the first one. So you know as you're moving um, first of all you, we know that there's for all intents and purposes three models. You have the embedded model um, in the vehicle you have the, the tethered model in, in the vehicle, and you have the, the integrated smartphone. What you're referring to is, is for the most part, um, it's going to be either the, the tethered or the integrated, the smartphone integrated version. So, in other words, your mobile phone, your smartphone is providing the connectivity, and likely it's going to be providing a lot of the intelligence services through apps on the handset. So what we do, is we have policies in the network that are set by the operator um, and multiple constituencies, business policy as well as technical policies on understanding how to move between and when and why and where, um, when to move between a cellular bearer and a Wi-Fi bearer. Now, as you move from your home into your vehicle, and if policy allows so, and dictate so, we'll continue to use that Wi-Fi network until it's no longer available. Mm -hmm. as, you're as you're losing that signal, we're already looking at the quality of other networks around you. We can make that move to that other network, and we do it in a, in a, uh, a transparent fashion and what we call a no-loss fashion. Your applications will continue to work and run because we will maintain manage that connection and that, that handover between those two networks. Now, you ask a more, I think, a, a, a somewhat philosophical question. The vehicle, what role does the vehicle play? Is it another subscriber? We look at the vehicle a little bit differently than others. The vehicle, in our mind, is really an extension of your mobile lifestyle. It really the, becomes the furthest edge of the network where you are still communicating and connected to that network. So a, as your smartphone moves in and out of that environment, that is really the, the intelligence and the management of how you and your vehicle at that point in time will connect to the network. So we like to think of it as really just an extension of your mobile lifestyle. Okay. okay. Well, the, yep, that, that answers the question. So the, the ecosystem associated with connected cars is evolving and clearly there's a lot of players looking to be the leader. Okay, the, the Googles, the Apples, the Microsofts, you had the auto companies themselves that have developed smart sync type systems and then you have the carriers. Right. Um, maybe talk, let's start with where, where BirdStep fits in, okay, into that ecosystem, and then maybe you can walk us through the evolution of that ecosystem over, as you see it over the next three to five years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very good question, too. It's, um, you know, this ecosystem um, that's evolving, it's evolving very, very quickly. This, 
it, it's not that um, th this notion of a connected car is, is brand new. This has been developing and evolving uh, for a number of years. Um, insurance companies back in you know the, the early uh, the early part of last decade were already putting devices in the car to understand how people drive their cars um, to uh, perhaps um, give financial incentives through uh, you know through lower policies on how to drive the car. I mean this has been coming along for quite some time. I remember back in 2000 where we had technology coming into the car in the black box to understand precisely how you were driving. So it's been coming along for some time now, but it's only been in the last couple of years that, you know, certainly since, you know, the likes of, of Qualcomm, the likes of Google, the likes of Apple have gotten involved that it's, it's, um, it, it's speeding up dramatically. And the way we look at it is, you know, today we provide a lot of capabilities that, that the Googles, the Apples, the Qualcomms, none of them are providing. They're looking more at the in-vehicle experience on one side and the service and content creation on the other side. It's been completely ignored, the issue of connecting that vehicle to that service or to the content. It's just a, a simple um, uh, anticipation that the cellular network will fix that. Well, you know, again, our experience has been that if you don't, if you don't proactively consider the issues, you don't take this from a consumer consumption perspective, what is the consumer experience going to be? If you simply anticipate that cellular will connect that content and that service to the vehicle, you're going to have a poor experience and you'll have very low, very poor consumer adoption of the services. We focus very much on bringing those two together so we help and assist the Googles of the world, the Apples of the world, the Microsofts of the world, as well as the OEMs, the, the vehicle OEMs of the world, to bring all of that together and connect that vehicle and that consumer with the content in a very reliable fashion, a very secure fashion. Something we didn't touch on was the, the embedded security that we bring, in, uh, bring to play here. So it's very secure, it's very reliable, and it's absolutely zero touch and transparent. Could you imagine having to drive down the car or drive down the street and you pull up at a stop sign and your smartphone, the way it acts today, if it sees a Wi-Fi signal, it's going to swing over that Wi-Fi signal. Now, could you imagine having to deal with that? Now, what were my credentials again? I have to log into this and do this. Wouldn't you want that absolutely transparent? Wouldn't you want it to do it by itself? And just, it simply works. That's what we do. That's the value that we bring. Well, we've talked about the ecosystem. We've talked about bird steps, intelligent routing capability, coupled with the uh, security and the zero touch safety uh, standpoint. What we be showcasing at this year's CTI show coming up next month? Right, so we're going to be talking a great deal about, we're, we're bringing some new technology out, we'll be talking about some new technology. We'll certainly be talking about our role in the connected car ecosystem and, and the value that we bring there, and introducing how some of our new technologies that are coming out here pretty soon, we'll be addressing those, uh, those, those requirements and those needs that the OEMs have for their vehicles, ensuring safety. Um, and certainly the, the mobile operators have in ensuring connectivity, reliability, security, and the customer experience, and, and certainly connecting that vehicle and that consumer with the content and services that they want to consume. Let's close line with a little background and history on, on BirdStep. Certainly, I'd love to. So um, that's a very interesting question. BirdStep was founded in 1996. Um, we went public in 2002. Um, we are headquartered in Stockholm, and we've got offices throughout the U.S., uh, throughout Europe, um, and we're just now bringing, uh, creating our presence in um, uh, in Asia as well. We provide um, um, highly secure uh, mobile communications to governments, to the military. Military is a, a very large vertical of ours. Um, as well as public utilities, um, as well as healthcare and finance. We provide um, in-vehicle routers for first responders and, again, highly secure, a very highly secure um, Android operating system 
for the verticals and the industries that are very dependent on security and on privacy. We bring, again, what we've been talking about, the consumer, um, the positive consumer experience around continuity of experience into the mobile operator space, um, into the, the cable TV operator space for the cable operators who are using Wi-Fi for the, their out-of-home presence and to, for distribution of their TV everywhere strategies. We work with cable operators to enable that customer experience in consuming their video data. We work with OEMs as well, and now we're getting in elbows deep into the connected car industry. Well, Lonnie, thanks for your time today. We look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas at uh, Super Mobility Week CTIA. Look forward to seeing you there too as well, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you.